You probably clicked on this video either because the title offended you or because you're curious about what the hell I'm talking about. But it really is quite simple. This title is not clickbait. It means exactly what you think it means. I want you to stop taking Fire Emblem so seriously. It's only a game. Why do you have to be mad? Now, some of you may think that this is going to be some kind of rant telling you how you should play and enjoy Fire Emblem, and it sort of is, but not in the way you think. I'm not here to tell you that the only way to play Fire Emblem is to use all mounted units, that movement is the best stat, or that LTC is the only viable way to measure your performance. No, screw that. I am here to tell you to stop cheating yourself so seriously whenever you play Fire Emblem. I want you to stop trying so hard. Fire Emblem is a game meant to be failed at, and I think your fear of failure is preventing you from enjoying it to its fullest. This right here is Donlot. Donlot is a bit of a weird dude, but I really like him, he's a good friend of mine. And he does a lot of Fire Emblem streams, including Iron Man runs. Over the many years I've been playing Fire Emblem, Donlot is one of the only people I know that plays the game in a very similar fashion to me. He plays pretty fast, and it almost seems like he's overly reckless at times. But the thing is, he's just not scared to fail. Whenever Donlot loses a unit, he can certainly be upset about it, but he bounces back from the loss almost immediately. And whenever he fails a run, he simply tries again, almost no matter the circumstances. This is because Donlot has mastered the art of not caring that much whenever he plays, and that is unironically how you start enjoying Fire Emblem on a completely different level. Don't you wish you could be more like Donlot? Well, you can, and in this video, I'll teach you how. This is how you can enjoy Fire Emblem more by not caring so much about Fire Emblem. No, it is not a joke. I am being 100% serious here. This is not some elaborate shit post. I seriously think this is the key to enjoying the game on a higher level. We spend so much time talking about how to play the game optimally, but I feel like almost no one talks about how to actually enjoy the game more, and that's what I'm gonna be delving into in this video. Now, you may be watching this video scratching your head and wondering what the hell I'm talking about, so allow me to explain in the best way I can. The original creator of Fire Emblem, Shoso Kaga, said in an interview that the reason why the first Fire Emblem game has such a huge cast of characters is that most of these units are actually not meant to be used. They are replacement units. That means that once you start losing your initial characters, you can swap them out with the later ones. A lot of players have often been confused over the years when it comes to the Arcanea games, because a lot of the later joining characters are inferior to the starting ones. Take the mercenary Caesar, for example, who joins six chapters after Ogma, and then compare their stats and growth rates. Ogma is just a superior unit. The same goes for the two armor knights, Dolph and Makalan. They join 11 chapters after Draug, and yet they are statistically inferior to him. This is because they are replacement units. They're not supposed to be great. They are your punishment for losing. Your reward for playing well is keeping your initial units alive and training them to the endgame, while your punishment for losing them is being forced to use these scrubs instead. When Kaga designed the first Fire Emblem game, he actually didn't intend for us to reset every single time a unit died, though he left the option open for us if we wanted to. But Kaga's original vision for Fire Emblem was for us to keep playing despite losing units. That's probably why we're not allowed to save mid-game in most of the chapters. Of course, Kaga completely underestimated just how attached players would get to their units to the point where they would rather spend hours replaying a single map to recover one of them instead of just taking the L and moving on. In later installments of Fire Emblem, the playable roster has shrunk down considerably from what it used to be. The original Fire Emblem games often had casts of 50 plus playable characters, whereas today it's usually around 20 to 30. This is because as the games have become more advanced, more care and effort have been put into each character. They've gotten their unique individual artwork, some of them have voice actors, they have supports, and a ton of other stuff. This has made the series veer away from Kaga's initial vision. Now people are much more attached to each individual character, thus they start caring a lot more about them. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't be attached to your characters, that is part and parcel of playing Fire Emblem, but in this video I want to advocate that you try to let go a little bit when you play, and I think you will enjoy Fire Emblem more if you're able to do this. I remember one perfect warm summer day in Norway when the sun was shining and most kids were at the beach, but me and my friend were too busy sitting inside playing Fire Emblem 3 Book 2 on the Super Nintendo. We had just arrived at the dreaded Chapter 3, arguably one of the worst maps in Fire Emblem history. 
Anyone who has played this pile of stinking garbage knows that to get every single recruitable character, you have to take an insanely long, tedious roundabout path around the mountains. And on a Super Nintendo, you don't have the speed up button, nor the emulator save states. It took us around four to five hours of real time to get to the end of this map, and right before we were going to seize the throne, our healer died to a Vyvern. We were so frustrated by this that we had to take a long break from the game. But predictably, we reset and replayed the whole map. This is because at the time, we were both completionists. We wanted to finish the game with all characters recruited and alive. And as a result, we dragged ourselves through another grueling four to five hours of chapter three. We've all been there. We've all reset a map because we want to keep that one character alive, even if it isn't anyone special. But what if the character is needed to recruit another character down the line? What if it locks you out from getting the best ending? Well, who cares? Then you just skip it. You can always replay the game later if you want to experience it. In this video, I want to preach the value of not caring so much about your choices and the consequences of those choices. It is hard to do this, because it is ingrained in our nature. Caring about things and being worried about the future is literally in our DNA. Those of our ancestors who did not do this were eliminated from the gene pool. But Fire Emblem is just a game. There is no need to take it so seriously. This is why I love Iron Manning. Iron Manning, for those of you who are living under a rock, is a playthrough of Fire Emblem where you are not allowed to load save files, so if a character dies, they're gone permanently, never to return. This is such a liberating way to play Fire Emblem, because you never have to reset a map. You keep playing until either you beat the game, or until the game beats you. However, while doing Iron Man runs is a lot of fun, I want to take it a step further. I want you to care less about your mistakes when you do regular playthroughs of Fire Emblem as well, and I'm not just talking about resetting whenever a character dies, but also when it comes to things like hoarding stat boosters. Watching my wife play Fire Emblem is an exercise in restraint. Restraint over not yelling at her for hoarding a million stat boosters, and she is not the only one who does this. Almost everyone I see playing Fire Emblem is sitting around with hordes of stat boosters in their convoy. Now, sinning on your stat boosters isn't always a bad idea if you have a specific plan in mind for them. But in almost every other game, I really advocate you just hand the stat boosters out as soon as you get them so they can be useful right away. If you don't know who to give them to, just give it to a unit you like or simply hand one over to your lord. You're going to be stuck with them for the whole game, so it's probably going to benefit them to gain a few bonuses to their stats. It's going to passively decrease the difficulty of the game in a big way and will allow you to relax more while you play. The same goes for deciding what units to train. Some people obsess over base stats and growth rates. They watch tier lists on YouTube to ensure they only spoon feed experience to the worthwhile candidates. Ooh, I must train the best of the best. I say you don't care so much about being optimal. If there's a character you like, use it. And don't you listen to what some stupid elitist is telling you online. Over the years, I've completely stopped caring about what character is good and what character is bad. I just use the characters I like. Take I Gren from Fire Emblem 6. She's a pretty bad unit. She's locked to bows, her growth rates are kind of mediocre. But you know what? She's really hot, and I like using her. And because of that, I discovered that she has some of the best supports in the game. And she actually became one of my favorite characters of all time. I would have never experienced this if I had just obsessed over being optimal. Learning to relax, detach, and let go when playing Fire Emblem is not easy. The fear of losing a unit is always present, even in the later games that allows you to rewind turns, as you'd rather hoard those charges instead of wasting them. But I'm telling you, once you let go and allow yourself to fail, you'll find that you actually make less mistakes, because when you're tense, you tend to mess up a lot more. Now, there are certainly times when you need to enter focus mode, but you don't need to do it all the time. When I see various Fire Emblem streamers play online, I often see them spending 5 plus minutes trying to figure out which unit to attack with. And even after spending all that time, the moves they make in the end are seldom optimal. This is because the more you grind your brain at the problem, the more narrow your vision will get. You may have experienced this when trying to solve a problem. You get so fixated on the problem itself that you get tunnel vision, and you stop seeing alternative solutions. This actually happens a lot more in Fire Emblem than you think. You may believe that the optimal solution to a problem is to kill a certain unit, and you try every which way to make this happen. But the solution may actually be not to kill the unit, but because you're so dead set on this path, you won't see that solution in front of you. Not unless you take a breath, relax, and detach yourself from the situation. Now, I know this seems counterintuitive. I'm essentially telling you to think less and play more recklessly and stop caring so much, and to not be afraid of failure. 
but the truth is that this will actually make you a better player. When you fail, those failures will teach you valuable lessons, and you'll find that Fire Emblem is a game where you can actually keep playing despite massive losses and still come out on top. There are some games in the series that are less forgiving than others, but most other Fire Emblem games are not like this, especially if you play on the lower difficulties. There is no need to try and optimize every single one of your characters or to try and keep everyone alive. So to summarize my points in this video, I've made five simple rules that I want you to try and follow the next time you play through a Fire Emblem game. 1. Don't reset if you lose a unit. There's always other units and pre-promotes later on which can take their place. 2. Don't be afraid to use your effective or expensive weapons early on. You'll get a lot more of them in the endgame. And chances are, you'll have way more gold than you need. 3. When you get a stat booster, hand it out to one of your units immediately. If you can't decide, just give it to a character you like or the main character. 4. Don't be afraid to take some risks. It might create some funny situations that you'll remember fondly. 5. When you fail, resist the urge to get emotional. Simply smile and continue playing. I promise you that if you follow these five simple steps, you will enjoy Fire Emblem on an entirely new level. But then again, you also shouldn't let some bold guy on the internet tell you how to play your favorite game. So if you want, please disregard everything I said in this video and just enjoy the game the way you want. My name has been Mengs. Thank you for watching.